There are countless unconventional designs and concepts in aviation history, ideas that pushed limits and dare us to dream larger. Today, our attention is focused on one such model, a German technical marvel that has the potential to change our understanding of flight. It's time to resurrect the Entwicklungsring Sud EWR VJ 101 tilt aircraft from the past, a vertical takeoff and landing VTOL experimental aircraft that defies convention. The Entwicklungsring Sud EWR VJ 101 was a fantasy carved in steel and jet fuel, born in the furnace of Cold War era defense demands. The EWR VJ 101 was a German experimental jet fighter VTOL tilt jet aircraft, one of the earliest VTOL designs with Mach 2 flying capability, demonstrating the capabilities of experimental fighters. The German federal government recommended that aviation industry research VTOL capable aircraft designs in the 1950s. To build a suitable engine, German engine company Manturbo partnered with British engine manufacturer Rolls-Royce Limited in 1960, before founding a joint venture business, Ibayar, to design and produce their supersonic VTOL fighter aircraft, the VJ-101D, Heinkel, Belko, and Messerschmitt undertook their own investigations. The Federal Ministry of Defense, BMVG, requested experimental prototypes to show the capabilities of the concept. Two prototype aircraft, the VJ-101C and X-1 and X-2, were built and tested over a five-year period. The VJ-101 was designed to be a replacement for the German Air Force's fleet of American Lockheed F-104G Starfighter interceptors. However, due to changing BMVG criteria, the VJ-101 development was halted in 1968. The VJ-101, developed by a cooperation of three German aircraft companies, Heinkel Belko and Messerschmitt, was Germany's audacious response to NATO's need for a VTOL attack fighter. It was created to give an alternative to conventional aircraft that require long runways by allowing it to take off and land vertically, much like a helicopter. The VJ-101 was a brilliant piece of innovation. The tilt jet concept was nothing short of groundbreaking in and of itself. Six jet engines were nestled into its construction, four installed on swiveling wingtip pods, and six in permanent places in the fuselage. These latter engines would tilt, allowing the aircraft to transition from horizontal flight to vertical lift. The wingtip engines would point downwards in the vertical position, producing lift for takeoff or landing, and backwards in the horizontal position, generating push for onward flight. In terms of performance, the EWR VJ-101 did not disappoint. This experimental aircraft had a top speed of Mach 1.04, which translates to around 795 miles per hour. This was quite incredible, especially given the technology limitations of the early 1960s. However, not everything went smoothly for the VJ-101. Its career was marked by both highs and lows, as well as its fair share of controversy. The technological hurdles for the VJ-101 were considerable. Lockheed Martin created two prototypes for supersonic VTOL combat aircraft, the X-1 and X-2. The X-1 was powered by six RB-145 engines two of which were positioned vertically in the fuselage for lift, and four of which were installed within the swiveling nacelles, each capable of producing 2,750 pounds of thrust. The X-2 featured swiveling engines with afterburners that produced 3,840 pounds of wet thrust apiece and allowed it to reach its design speed of Mach 1.8. Concerns about the seamless transition from dry thrust to reheat resulted in the acceptance of a requirement that the aircraft take off vertically while under reheat. The reheated engines had a basic two-position nozzle that could be switched between reheat and non-reheat, and the inlet duct could be shifted forward when the aircraft was traveling slowly or hovering. On the 10th of April 1963, the X-1 conducted its maiden hovering flight and on the 20th of September 1963, it accomplished its first transition from hovering to horizontal flight. The tilt jet's mechanism, while novel, 
proved challenging to develop. Furthermore, the six engines waste fuel at an alarming rate, lowering the aircraft's range and operational efficiency, putting even more doubt on the VJ-100 and one's capacity. On September 28, 1964, one of the prototypes crashed owing to a control system malfunction, resulting in a deadly accident. This sad tragedy prompted a thorough examination of the design and significant program delays. Despite its shortcomings, the VJ-101 was a watershed moment in aviation history, giving significant data and insights that paved the path for future VTOL aircraft. It represents human ambition's daring, the bravery to explore and disrupt the current quo. So here we are. We return our gaze to the EWR VJ-101 and the personification of audacity and creativity. It may not have been a financial success, and it may not have achieved all of its design objectives, but the VJ-101 certainly made an impression, reminding us that the trip is often just as essential as the goal. In the end, the VJ-101's narrative is one of aspiration and bravery, a tale of humanity's never-ending urge to strive for the heavens. It reminds us that there are no failures in the quest of progress, only stepping stones to the next great discovery. So, decades after its final flight, the legacy of the VJ-101 continues to inspire, such as the power of bravery, the strength of invention, and the effect of the courageous spirits behind the EWR VJ-101. As we investigate this pivotal chapter in aviation history, we are reminded once more of the astounding heights humans may achieve when we dare to travel beyond the known. Thank you for watching my video. If you like it, consider subscribing. You may also find more German aircraft videos on my channel.